So we've come along to Tunnel Barn Fishery today and I'm going to briefly talk you through how to set your pole rollers up. Um, it's something that can be overlooked by a lot of anglers um, and especially when you're speed fishing or you know catching a lot of fish it's really really imperative to have your rollers set up. Um, as we've spoke about on previous videos you know every second counts in the match situation. But not only that it's about protection of your pole. Um, so the way I like to set my rollers up, firstly, I'll always use a pole sock. Now this allows me to, one, secure my pole in a certain position. So when I've shipped my pole back and I'm either playing a fish or I'm rebaiting, um, I know that my pole's secure in that position. So every time I go to ship out, I'm not looking around for my pole section. Secondly, it secures it when it's windy. So I haven't got to worry about it blowing, you know, my pole rollers over or anything. And what I like to try and do is have, so if it blows against the sock, it's also at the side of the sock, it's also blowing against the very edge of the roller. So what that means is once your pole's blown right to one side, it's got three contact points if you're using two rollers and the pole sock, to which um, the poles spread, obviously, the force of the wind going through it, eliminating the chance of your rollers getting blown over. Secondly, which is really important, is the space in between your pole rollers. Um, I always work on a basis that if I'm fishing 13 metres, I'll have the increments from my pole sock to my second to my third roller spaced equally. What that means is when you're shipping your pole in and out, once you come off your second roller, you're not all of a sudden incurring a load of weight, which will incur either your pole to flick up or drop down onto the water. And again, that's very important with your, with your roller close, closest to you because again, if it comes off that roller and it's too far behind you, all of a sudden your pole will drop up and um, you'll either obviously tangle your rig or your bait will fall out of your pot. Again, on a similar, similar principle, you don't want that pole roller too close to you because you'll find when you're shipping back, you'll keep hitting it with your pole. Thirdly, it's really important to have your pole roller set at the correct height. Obviously this varies on the terrain behind you and what the bank's like, but as a rule of thumb for me, I always like to have my pole so that when I'm shipping out, it's at my knee level, so that I'm not having to lift it up or bring it down. So I can ship across my rollers and it goes across my knees. So basically it's the most efficient way for me to ship in and out. You'll also notice that the pole's on a slight angle coming towards the water. What that enables me is when I'm shipping in and out, one, my rig's not hanging out the water, so I am uh, reducing the chance of tangling my rig. But also when I'm playing a fish, I haven't got a huge amount of pole hanging out the water, which means when it's going across the rollers, if the fish comes off or, you, you know, if it runs and, and the hook comes out or anything like that, if your rig pings back, it's still in the water, so it's not going to fly out the water and, again, tangle around the top of your pole. And, and generally for shipping in and out as well, if you have it closer to the water, you know, you've got less chance of the wind catching it or, you know, your rig flying over the top of your pole. So another important factor with the pole roll and that these days is that you have that central upright divider. Now the ability to be able to split your pole and use one pole roller with two sections of pole um, inevitably is, is becoming more and more important these days with commercial fisheries having high banks behind them and needing to fish longer lengths of pole. As a general rule of thumb, what I tend to do is I'll always have my front roller with the upright um, and if I need to, I'll have one at the rear, but generally I would fish it with um, no, no upright on the rear roller, purely because gen the, the amount of times I'm actually shipping a length of pole over two rollers um, and needing to double ship is very, very few. Um, so now I'll quickly show you how I ship in and out. We'll do some fishing, hopefully catch some fish and you can generally get a feel of how the new map dual pole, pole rollers work. Right, so I'll quickly run through what I was talking about earlier about how having your pole rollers set up um, on a slight angle towards the water can really help when you're shipping your pole in and out. So as you'll notice, my pole's always stored in the pole sock, so I know exactly where it is. Now when I'm shipping out, you'll see that my pole is angled towards the water so that my rig is constantly in the water. Now all I do is once I've got to the point where I feel like I need to ship it across my knees, I'll slide it across my knees and it completely comes off the roller. There's no bouncing of the pole, you know, I'm not going to lose any bait from my pole pot or anything like that. And it also allows me to ship out really freely and smoothly and efficiently.
So and as you'll see, as I ship back with the fish on, what it enables me to do with the way that I've got my rollers set up behind me is pop my pole onto my first roller and you can see how close my pole tip is to the water still. So if that, if that hook comes out off the fish's mouth or anything like that or I lose it for any reason, I haven't got to worry about my rig popping out. Pop your pole into your pole sock to keep it secure. And there we go, there's a lovely F1. So, as I demonstrated there, it's really important when, not only when you're shipping out, but when you're actually playing fish to be able to keep your pole um, close to the water. But not only that, you'll notice that when my pole was on the roller, I wasn't having to worry about looking behind me to uh, see where the pole roller was situated because it's directly behind me. I know exactly where it's going to be. And once I've got that, my pole on the first roller, I know because I haven't got the second divider on the rear roller, I know instantly that it's going to fall within them two uprights on the second roller. So again, like I said, just to emphasize on the points of, of having your rollers set up in the correct positions so that when, you know, it does speed your fishing up um, and it does make your life a lot easier, especially when, you know, it can be a situation of getting a tangle or something like that. Um, you know, and it'll generally just make your fishing a lot more comfortable. So I hope you found a few of those tips that I've spoke about today useful. Get out to your local fishery and put them into practice.